Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at micro hydropower plants. So let's dive right into it. So what is this idea? Well, it's a very simple thing. It's uh, just using the movement of the water to make power, not the water itself, movement of the water. You can't make water into power. You need uh, moving water. So basically it's taking a hover dam, making it into a small dam. That's the whole idea of this micro power plant. Generally, the power rating is below 100 kilowatt. So this is the whole idea and it's supposed to provide power 24 into seven. So how does this work? Well, there are many designs. So I practically cannot give you a list of every single design. However, be mindful of this is that generally, whenever somebody is talking about this, they are talking about almost reservoirless or a very small reservoir. So they're not gonna flood a whole area just to make a, you know, a small dam. So many of you are familiar with dam construction is that the biggest uh, land loss happens because of the reservoir construction. So even if uh, let's say you are uh, miles away from the dam, your whole area still could be flooded the reservoir that goes for big dams are huge they are so big and uh, they even cause earthquakes because the, uh, the stagnant amount of water that they you know exert on the same place it's so much that they can activate small fault lines now of course uh, you should not build a very very large dam on a very active fault line but if you have even small fault lines going through it and if you have reservoir that is very huge like hoover dam kind of huge it could uh, trigger minor earthquakes so this is the core component of a micro system they have almost very small and when i mean small i mean it might be just a water tank just to make sure that you know there is no fluctuation to almost some directly run on continuous water like old water wheels so and the core aspect of it because this is uh, worked on a individual level or a small community level uh, they don't have as much leeway as a you know big corporation does so they have to make sure it's minimal impact so what does this make the minimal impact basically think of it this way nobody should see oh uh, this whole area is flooded because somebody built a dam that cannot allow to be happen so uh, people should like literally walk across a micro hydro power plant and they should not even know it oh it's a micro hydro unless they oh a lot of power wire, power wire is coming out of it and like you know there is water stream going into it so of course those you can still see like even though this is well concealed you can still see there is a waterway that is coming out of it so you can see it is just that it will be very well concealed so what are the pros of it now first biggest pro about it is very high power the generally designs that we are talking about some designs of this nature that can go upwards of 50 kilowatts that's a lot of power and that's 50 kilowatt per hour that's not that you got 50 kilowatt that's it you got 50 kilowatt per hour and uh, even if you build a small plant you can easily get two to three kilowatt per hour now that may not sound that much you may be like okay my you know house consumes upwards of 10 kilowatt per hour yes but like like that will happen only only in a, you know small increments you will not be running your toaster and microwave and your washing machine and your dryer and your everything everything simultaneously so if you uh, if you have an energy storage system let's say a battery bank you can literally provide uh, 24 into 7 power for even a very demanding home from just uh, like you know 3 to 5 kilowatt per hour so be mindful of this the power density wise this is very good this is very power it's very reliable like in terms of technology wise it's very old very time tested like we know how this works we got this and uh, the core component why would you even want to bother with this uh, to you know redirect water and things of that nature is that it is 24 into 7 so uh, you can you don't have to worry about like okay what we're gonna do at night some situation you can literally directly sell the electricity to the grid and uh, you know you may be selling directly 24 into 7 into 365 basically until you have to shut it down for maintenance or uh, you know something bad happens so that 24 into 7 power is a very, very compelling uh, aspect about it. So are there any consequences of this? Well, undeniably so. Everything has a pro and con. This has the consequence that it is cost and complexity. I, uh, when we are talking about cost, it could call upwards of uh, 10 to $20,000 or sometimes even $50,000. Now you might be like, okay, that's high, but not that high. Like a comparable solar farm will, uh, you know, take a lot of uh, 
the same amount of money or if not at least half of it the problem come, arises from the fact that a solar system has very little to no moving part moving parts are not something that you can just put and ignore you can ignore your solar panels on your roof like up for upwards of like let's say yearly and if it rains regularly let's say it rains once a year it's going to be cleaned off naturally so you don't have to worry about it however whenever you are building a hydro dam things of this nature a small one uh, it takes a lot of uh, material it takes a lot of uh, moving parts so it is not something that you put and forget that's not possible in this this things requires so maintenance on a level that makes a uh, wind turbine you know look uh, easy low maintenance compared to it so be mindful of that it is not cheap nor it's a uh, complication free now even with that the then it comes to the regulation when i said uh, you know you can divert to water there is a very serious regulation in almost every part of the world civilized world that you can't just uh, okay let's say a small creek is going through your river uh, property as in uh, you can't just divert 100% of the water they will not allow you like you will go to jail if you do that so you have to check uh, regulations you have to like okay this is my creek how much water i can uh, you know divert so be mindful people uh, legally you are not allowed to just block that you can't just build a simple dam you have to divert a water and they will allow you to like you know divert let's say 30% or 40% or like you know 60% whatever so there is a legal reason for that and even if you let's say bribe someone and to get uh, you know your permit that says you, uh, you know you can divert uh, 70% let's say that's very high uh, there is a chance that, that when that person retires or uh, let's say you know new government comes in things of that nature happens again your uh, per permit will be revoked at that point so regulation is very serious around this so and uh, somebody said a very interesting thing about this that you never own the land or uh, the water on it you own the rights to it basically government at any moment in time can build a dam before you you did or can build uh, after you basically then the the whole place will be flooded so be aware of this that it may look like okay i have complete control over it legally you do not because water is classified as a public resource no single individual controls it so that's why we have committees water committees or things of that nature so even if let's say somehow you can go through it or you are living in a flat out wilderness and you know for a fact nobody is going to come there to you know check or do anything uh, fancy like that what are you going to do about location this is the final nail in the coffin because everything till this point you can manage one way or the another some way or the another but you can't manage the fact that most people don't live in a place where you have like a convenient access to running water almost all of us have access to wind and solar now of course the power uh, varies uh, drastically so let's say you are closer to the north pole your solar output would be less uh, let's say you are a place where it rains a lot your solar power would be less but you will still have access to it uh, wind wind is also very kind of choosy but still you have access to wind of course you you may be only getting let's say 5 kilowatt rather than 25 kilowatt but you have access to it in this the ax location where you can have this is very small so if you have this kind of world like only this place this place that place like very small small places have that access and on a individual level or on a you and i level very few uh, people have that kind of property and i told you like government can any time can simply decide okay we're going to build a dam and that thing can be taken away from you so location regulation and the cost and complexity really hampers the growth of this on an individual level so what we can expect in the future well even though on an individual level this is not a very practical situ situation it does make lot of sense for small communities like uh, my personal favorite example is nepal i have provided the uh, video link down below you can check it out for yourself because nepal well because it's landlocked and uh, it does not have access to well any source of practical energy they have to rely on hydro power however hydro dams are very 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 expensive and on top of that let's say you took out a loan to build it takes time it takes uh, you know uh, upwards of 10 to 15 years to build something big and powerful and then on top of that becomes a problem that let's say you built a dam and you figured out a area where you're going to make a reservoir which has almost no uh, ecological disaster let's say you did that how you going to transmit the power that also becomes an issue so as you can see nepal literally is a himalayan place like uh, the flatlands they have here it's very little so let's say you built up uh, you know dam here you got all the power let's say nepal consumes uh, 1 terawatt of power you got the power plant that makes two Uh, so even accounting for transmission loss you can transfer a lot of power how you going to lay the power lines so that becomes a issue like 
dams are not feasible even though you can pay for it so in this sort of scenario making a small micro hydro dams makes a lot of sense and i'm talking like you know 50 kilowatts 30 kilowatts like small small villages they will have that much power now if you are living in a you know first world country you may be like okay that's a very little amount of power yes or no like uh, think of it this way we are used to very large amount of power because efficiency is not something that we consider when these people are setting up shop from day one everybody is using led so and day one everybody's primarily focus is lighting then they think of something else okay we got the lighting now uh, now we're gonna uh, introduce communication and uh, let's say tvs and refrigerator for uh, and they are not gonna you know have a situation where every home has a refrigerator they're gonna have a refrigerator in a pharmacy so you know all the medicines can be kept uh, refrigerated so in this sort of context 20 uh, kilowatts of power that is coming continuously it's more than sufficient and uh, they can supplement it with other things also and uh, because of the scale cost and things of that nature UN has estimated that uh, you can electrify a whole of Nepal with um, surplus electricity without costing too much the core uh, you know catch here is that people have to work for this it cannot be like okay we uh, pay us the money we're gonna build it no they're gonna only supply the you know let's say generator or engineers but like people have to dig up the trenches and uh, you know reroute the water basically it requires uh, rocks cement concrete nothing fancy is, it is doable it does not require semiconductor industry so in this sort of region it makes a lot of sense so you may live in a place where you have large enough community that has a you know small body of water that can provide this sort of uh, power so you have to you know get uh, permits based on a community because at that scale uh, permits become easier to attain then we talk about better design if you are familiar with this sort of turbine design that is very high efficiency however that requires a very uh, large amount of what we call head pressure basically water must be falling from it it does not need a lot of water but it needs water falling from a large distance there are other designs each design has its own benefit so if you are next to a waterfall for instance you want to rely on that now let's say you are most of us are not next to a waterfall this design makes sense now this design has the advantage that uh, if you have a basically small canal going through you you can simply channel the water there and this design in, uh, built in a such a way that it has almost no gearbox uh, only thing moving is the turbine itself so it reduce the components count and it's concrete based so uh, cost is very low and because uh, the turbine is not completely safe, fish can go through so if you are living in a place where people do fishing or farming of that nature in that uh, you know canal this will not cause an issue that is why water is always classified as public resource it's not classified as like okay even though canal may be going next to you natural canal i'm talking let's say you bought the land you bought the canal for your irrigation you don't have a hundred percent control over it you can't just block it so better design does allow us to bypass a lot of legalities without uh, you know messing things up so this sort of design i have also provided a link below you can check out so at the end of the day uh, lowering cost it is very niche application under no circumstances think of it this way this will become as ubiquitous as uh, solar solar is much much more practical compared to this much more practical and much uh, you know location even location independent now of course in nepal it's you know covered by mountain it's covered by you know fog most of the time so solar panel is not going to do much you know uh, help here but they have hydropower so they can't build large dam because a it's expensive b how the heck you're going to transmit the power so in this sort of scenario we can see a lot of small communities you know taking a situation in their own hand and uh, in if you see the description down below you will find there are many individuals that have done this uh, so some people are like you know there are community that is completely cut off uh, isolationist community that is completely cut off the modern world and like they do homeschooling for their kids they grow the uh, you know food in their own place so they have this sort of scenario but again be aware of this water is not yours you have to be thorough about the law so i think we're gonna see a small part of our renewable energy take a form of micro hydro dams so this was my presentation on micro hydro dam power basically i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to leave a comment and uh, please share it amongst your friend hashtag science thursday and uh, subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching